Hi everyone, it's Pete here and welcome to today's video. So today we're going to be talking about the, the, the property recession that everyone's talking about. You know, is it going to happen this year? Is it going to be into next year? And, and what's going to happen? How bad is it going to be? So today I'm actually going to give my thoughts on, you know, what I think will happen. And, and obviously I'm not an economist or I'm not somebody that, you know, can predict the future, obviously. So these are just my opinions on what I actually think is going to happen and, and, and what I could see potentially happening into next year. For those that don't know me, I mean, I started investing in 2008 in the last recession. And for those that last watched the last video, they'll know some of the sort of tips that I give for investing in a recession. So even if there is a severe drop in prices, there's going to be opportunities, there's things that we can do to make sure we survive that. And again, that was covered in the last video. If you find the video useful, if you wouldn't mind liking and subscribing to the, the channel, because that really helps the channel out, helps it grow. And we're aiming to bring information to, to people so that they can really benefit from this and actually you know, benefit from property information, but also from our experience over the last 12 years. So to begin with then, we're gonna talk about so, you know, what's actually happened in the economy over the last six months. So obviously we've had a small thing called COVID-19, which actually came you know, obviously pretty much in some respects out of the blue and just completely has changed the world, changed the business world. That's actually meant over the sort of last six months, there's been a lot of businesses that are now struggling. So we obviously had the lockdown, which meant that many couldn't open for a long time. And that's really put a strain on, on businesses as a whole. But even before COVID, there was talk of a property market crash from many economists. So if we go on to this article here, I mean, this one was from 2017. And, and personally, myself, you know, I've been hearing since almost the start of 2016, where many economists were predicting, you know, a recession next year. And if we see here in 2017, you know, UK could be hit with a new property recession as house prices tumble. So there's been a lot of this talk, you know, over, over the last few years. And sometimes a lot of people joke that if they say it every year, at some point, they're going to get it right. And so that's something we're seeing a lot of. And we're actually seeing that a lot of people now are, are predicting that because of of COVID because of actually what's happened this year as a whole and, and moving into next year, there's then going to be, you know, the, the recession that they're talking about. But what measures have been introduced to combat this? Because obviously it's been a, a worldwide pandemic and they started with the, the furlough scheme. Uh, there's also mortgage companies giving payment holidays. You've also had specific grants and loans. And then there was a, an eat out to help out scheme as well to help the, the hospitality industry. So. If we move on to the furlough scheme, so this was brought in because obviously with the world coming to a standstill and a lot of businesses shutting, that just meant that you know businesses weren't able to pay their staff, they weren't able to work in, in the ways that they were before. And so the government brought in the, the furlough scheme, which as you can see on the screen here, is it's staggered throughout the year. So from June you had where the government paid 80% up to a 2,500 cap, right then through to the end in October, where they'll be paying 60% up to a 1875 cap. And, and they've said that this, that won't be extended. So employers then will have to pay national insurance and pension contributions from August. And they also are able to top up furlough to pay the 100% at their own expenses. And from people I've spoke to, some people have done this and other people haven't. A lot of the time, not because they want, haven't wanted to, but because they've just not been able to, because obviously the businesses have not been able to work and operate in, in the same way. So that's sort of the first thing the government did. There's also uh, the mortgage payment holidays. And so this was for people that are uh, at home mortgages, but it also included buy to let mortgages. And so it was essentially trying to provide flexibility in repaying the mortgage. So you can actually then reduce your monthly payments or even stop them. So. A key point here is that you know any unpaid interest would still need to be paid back, but you shouldn't have to worry about any fees or charges. And obviously, people that were using this should speak to their, you know, their lender and actually tell them that they were experiencing problems. But again, this was something that that was brought in um, by by the government, by these companies, to actually help people throughout this pandemic. There's also the the coronavirus bounce back loans, which again was a another thing brought in by the government to help businesses access finance more quickly. And so this again was helping small and medium sized businesses borrow between 2000 and up to 25% of their turnover. So the maximum, the maximum loan available is 50,000 and there was interest, this is interest free then for the first 12 months. 
after 12 months, it's something where the interest rate then will be 2.5% a year. However, you know, that's still a cheap loan in that respect. So people have been accessing this, which again is something that it was brought in because of this pandemic and, and to try and help people survive this and survive it through. So this is something that, again, one of the things they did. And so there's also the Eat Out to Help Out scheme, which was brought in to help the hospitality industry. So with everywhere being shut for so long, you know, businesses were struggling. And so the government brought that incentive in to, to get people back out into restaurants, spending money, and they were contributing towards the meals that people were having out. And so, again, it was, you know, just because the, the places had opened, there's still people that were, you know, scared of going into public places because of the pandemic and because of the virus. And so that was another thing they were trying to they were bringing in to actually get more people out, spend the money and to hopefully help the economy longer term. But a lot of this was bought in because borrowing, you know, is so cheap, they've been able to do this. But, you know, is this just delaying the inevitable? And, you know, a lot of people do think that. So, I'm actually going to move on now and I'm going to give my thoughts on, on the situation and, and what I feel is now going to happen, you know, over the next six to 12 months. OK, so before I tell you what I think is going to happen then moving into next year, it's important to remember what can cause prices to go up or down and why this could happen. And, and if they do decrease into next year, you know, what's affected that? So with property, with them going up and down, it's to do with supply and demand. And so when the supply is higher, and the demand is less, they usually then go down. Whereas when the demand for property is higher and there's less supply, then they tend to increase. And there are certain drivers that can affect this. And so low interest rates for a start is one that is increasing the demand at the moment because you know when interest rates are low, it means it's more attractive for people to buy. And so there's more demand for those properties. Similarly, with the stamp duty holiday that, that ends next year, we've seen a real surge, certainly in our area, of people looking to buy property because obviously they're going to be saving money on the stamp duty. So again, that's increased the demand for properties. And with them there being less supply, they're, you know, they're tending to increase then. So this is what's causing that increase in the moment. There's also other drivers though that usually affect the prices to come down. So one of those is, is unemployment. That's, a, you know, that's obviously a big one. Um, that's one where people then obviously if they lose their jobs are not in a position to buy properties because you know, they've not got the income. So that can then really affect their ability to get finance. So again, that tends to mean then that there's, there's more supply because the demand for those properties has gone down because they just, whether they want to or not, cannot buy. There's also the, you know, the fear factor when, pr when prices then do start to decrease. That has a sort of snowballing effect that I found in, in the last recession because people become a lot more fearful of property and what happens with the prices decreasing. And so again, there's less demand then for people who are wanting to buy property. Okay, so what do I think is then going to happen then moving into to next year? So again, like a lot of people, I do believe that, you know, when the furlough scheme ends, you know, it's been said that it's not going to extend. So once that ends in October, I do believe then there's going to be a lot of redundancies because, you know, companies have already started to make redundancies, but I believe that will continue because, you know, they just can't afford to keep people in work when obviously the economy has changed, you know, the way they've done business has changed. And so, unfortunately, I can really see that happening. With that happening, you know, that's obviously going to mean then people are not in a position to buy properties. You know, they can't buy in a lot of cases. And so the supply is going to increase and the demand is going to drop because, you know, when people can't buy the properties, just that there will be no demand for them. And so that then will tend you know, to decrease prices then. The other thing is the cost of living with the fact that you know, there's already talk of different taxes coming in and you know, at some point the, the money that the government has been lending will have to be paid back. And so that's going to probably make the cost of living more. And again, that's going to squeeze people even more, meaning they're just not in a position to buy property and so the demand will be less. So I do believe there's going to be a decrease in prices. Uh, I can't say exactly when that will be, but for us what we've seen in our area is that you know, the stamp duty holiday up until the end of March this initial surge in transactions that we've seen has actually happened, you know, over the last month or so. And probably that will continue, you know, if not completely up until it ends, it, you know, near enough to when it happens. So a lot of people are sort of thinking that it'll be the second half of next year when things really start to, you know, come down and, and prices do start to take a tumble. I don't believe that it'll be, you know, as bad as 2008. I believe that it, it may be more of a correction rather than, you know, where they drop 20, 30%. You know, I personally don't think that will happen. But for those that watched the, the video before, you know, if it does happen, then often when prices 
do take a tumble or, or do decrease, you know, rents then can increase because people can't buy. And so there's m more demand for lettings then. You know, people have to then live somewhere. And so if they can't buy, they've got a rent, which then can push the prices of the rents up. So even if it does get to the point where we have a, a you know, real, real drop as we did in 2008, then as long as you follow certain tips and do certain things, and again, the, the video that we, we did before explained some of the things that I did throughout 2008, then you know you can get through that, and you know you'll actually there's always opportunities. So you know that may be like say the relaxation of planning laws or the fact that prices drop. But you know as long as rents are still high and stable, then if prices do drop, then that might be a time for people who you know can buy to actually then enter the market and buy. So again, a lot of people just won't be in a position to buy because they haven't got the money, they haven't got the finance. You know they can't get the finance, which will then mean you know the, the demand for the properties. Is less but for the people that can there'll be some great opportunities there and some some ways to really pick good bargains up into next year I saw that you know a lot in 2008 where I was able to buy properties you know at discounts at the lower prices because I was in a position to buy at that time I could get the finance where needed and actually that allowed me to pick up some really good properties and you know over time they've grown in value so there's always opportunities in a recession but you know sort of to conclude I do feel that it's going to be into sort of the second half of next year where we really start to see, like I say, prices more correct rather than a you know, huge 30% drop. I believe it will be, won't be as bad as that, but I do believe there'll be a correction and they will come down slightly. That will be dependent on areas. And again, you know, who knows? I haven't got a crystal ball. That's just my opinion. But I can definitely see a decrease because of things like the furlough scheme ending, because of unemployment because of people, you know, the cost of living and people being squeezed in different areas, it's really going to mean that, you know, the, the demand is less, which then usually decreases prices. So as always, then, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have and you wouldn't mind giving it a like, that'd be great. Any comments or questions you've got, then please put below and we'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.